All right, Shalom Rastafari. I want to touch on a very important subject matter that has been on our minds and a lot of discussion has been conducted on the internet and even amongst many of I and I, I'm sure many of y'all have spoken about this whole issue of so-called prosperity preachers and pastors out there and the whole prosperity gospel, so-called. Many have rightly named it to be a false gospel or a, a perversion of the true gospel. On some level, it can even be called magic and witchcraft. Now, of course, people, there's a lot of folks out there who really buy in to the so-called prosperity gospel. I often like to try to approach one with some logic, but when you approach one with logic, it's like you reproach them with logic. So it's not like a approach, it's like they get reproached by it. But I say, wait, if y'all in the black church, and now I want you to get these figures out there. First of all, let's first of all introduce this particular vid right here. This is another, um, I think back in the days we would call it jump off videos, right? But this is on the consciousness level some of the jump off video series. This one right here, it has this plastic on it, so let's try to get a get a good um this is that guy Eddie Long, but it's basically about the prosperity so called gospel. Right? It's actually called um the false teachers and this is the second edition. In fact I want you to get a, a clear shot of it. So if you see it out there you can check it out on the what they call it on the the YouTube so out there on the internet. Mm hmm Okay, here we go. Hey so you see it's a little more clear right here. Right, it's part of the Exposed series right here. This is the name of it right here. The false right, the false teachers, and then here's the back of it, some of the information right here in the back of it, so forth and so on, and it's a good collection of a lot of the information out there, prosperity, so-called ministries, mainly this touches on uh, Bishop um, Eddie Long and Kreflo <laughs> Krep 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 Dollar. Creflo Dollar. I'm sure you've heard of these two individuals. In fact, Creflo has just been in the news recently. He allegedly has um, was choking his daughter. He was choking his daughter, Creflo Dollar. Maybe you didn't hear about it, but just put Creflo Dollar arrest or something like that, and you should see the news story, so forth and so on. And a lot of people are commenting on it, you know, because he choked his daughter, his 15-year-old daughter, who wanted to go to a party at 1 a.m. in the morning, and according to her, he choked her, and either he slapped her, punched her, or hit her, or something like that. And he was arrested for domestic violence. They gave him about $5,000, um, you know, a bail meant bail for, for bail. And I think he's he's back out on his so-called own recognizance until whatever so-called trial or deliberation is done on this. But it's kind of, that, that whole issue right there is a whole other matter because some would say what this goes right back to beating and beating children. And there's a lot of discussion on whether children should be beaten or not. And there's a lot of folks who believe in beating children. And many of us may have been beaten. And so there's a lady, a sister, I forgot her name, but she wrote a book called Beating Black Children. I think, I think it's Beating Black Kids. So it might be Beating Black Kids or Beating Black Children. Um, and it was on this Here and Now show here in the New York area, ABEWABC. And it was very, very interesting because um, I think that's an issue that a lot of us have to address because there's a lot of old um, old time Negroism you know, it's part of that artificialness. And this is not to say that violent children might not have to be dealt with in violent means, so to speak. But 
before I even get to that stage, there's some foundations that and groundations that one should lay. But often what ones do, and it's similar to the prosperity gospel. This is why I think it really like connects here. Ones would say, well, the Bible say. Nobody ever asked them where in the Bible. I want to go check it out for myself. If you do that, you'll be disrespected and you might get beaten. You know, if you ask those questions. Coming from a so-called black Gentile perspective, right? That's what most of us in our artificial NBC state, Negro, Blacks, and Colored with the Falls, European names, Smith, Jones, Johnson, Jackson, George Jefferson, all these European names that have been, um, I can't say given to us, they've been enforced on us, and that's all a part of this artificial state. You understand? Not People are not in their right minds in that state. And though we want to leave slavery behind and forget about slavery, most of the problems or challenges, you see, the only challenges if we're willing to confront them. But since most black folks are not really willing to confront these issues, the main issues, the root issues, instead they, you know, they do the blame game. You know what I'm saying? So if you're talking about the white man, the European, the system of things, the world, or whatever like that, it's you. Just go out there and get a job. You know, that's the basic response that is often given. Yet, when we return to the covenant, to our birthright, we reclaim uh, our birthright. You understand? And recognize how we were birthed or born wrong. Even the beating issue really needs to be looked at. But the Bible quote that people often say, um, spare the rod, spoil the child. Now, from a Israelitish or a black Hebrew or Hebro, if you please, perspective, in other words, from a covenant, a B'nai Barit perspective, and when we return to our proper person, we who recognize that we're the once lost but now found beta Israel, there's a whole process of transformation, spiritual, psychological, and, and physical um, change. And this physical change is mainly dealing with our status, you know, our status, everything from artificial person to natural person to our inalienable rights, from so-called civil rights to our human rights, from so-called African or African, African American to our true Ethiopian Hebrew identity, or for other Hebrews might be more Moorish, but the Moorish, they are also our Hebrew family, and they're on to something concerning the law. You understand? And concerning that knowledge and application of the law. You understand? So on that particular issue, we are at agreement. I can understand now why Ruth, um, King David's great-grandmother, you know, she was a Moabite on that sort of a level. Now, that doesn't excuse other things concerning even slavery and, and the Moorish involvement in the slave trade. That's a kind of a double-edged sword right there. But we've all fallen short of the glory of Ha Elohim, you see? And this is a message to I and I people. So we have to recognize that a lot of these things are behind us, are not things that we had any choice in, but is what we now have been given. So we have to deal with what we have been given and recognize I and I true past. So you hear these folks that say, spare the rod, spoil the child. Now we have Creflo um, Dollar being arrested for so-called child abuse, right? Um, um, uh, choking his child and slapping and whatever else um, the, the, you know, the charges basically say. And then folks will say, spare the rod, spoil the child. But from a Hebrew perspective, or a Jewish or a Israelite perspective, the rod is Torah. You know what the rod is? The rod is this right here. The rod is the scripture. The rod is the Bible. The Bible is the rod that that Proverbs quote that is mis, so often mis, um, 
misapplied and appropriately applied. So they say, spare the rod, spoil the child, and they go pick up a stick, a rod, a baseball bat, and they think that's what John meant. And see, the same thing is true with the issue of tithes as well. There's a lot of black folks, especially in this church game, in this church thing, who if you tell them that they're Israelites, they would say, no, we're not Israelites, we're Gentiles. In fact, in this very same documentary right here, you get a chance to check it out. There's a black preacher who basically discusses the true point from the Bible, but he says something interesting in, in, in this right here. I forgot his name, but it's near the end of this video. I think he's also in the earlier portion of this video right here. It's almost like three hours or so, but it's, it's interesting because he's speaking to the congregation, and he says that What's written here concerning tithes in the scripture, the first thing we have to know is the origin of things. We have to know who was it speaking to. And this is a very key point, and it leads to some other related, some, some, some related points that I think is very important to share with you all and to try to inspire and even provoke on a certain level a, a more further discussion of these things, because you'll see that it's this part of our, our story that we are not dealing with in order to really free ourselves. And, and it's part of knowing the truth. We prefer to remain in willing ignorance about that. Like people say, well, the Bible says such and such, and they never thought, think about it, if you knew the Bible said something, wouldn't you want to go read it for yourself? But we've been depending on hearsay. A lot of hearsay, even with the prosperity gospel and the whole issue of tithing, ones have been, been deep ending, not just depending, but deep ending upon, upon hearsay. And this hearsay has led to the present, um, it's like a plague in a sense, of heresy that we see going on in the so-called um, Negro, Black, and Colored Church. Now, as far as for I and I as Rastafari, as Beta Israel, as Ethiopian Hebrews, and in particular, in this society, the Society of His Imperial Majesty, otherwise known as the LOJ Society, or Yehuda Moa Anbesa Machiber, the Lion of Judah Mission Incorporated, there will be no tithes till the Promised Land. Anyone who gives a donation or a free will donation or, or for purchase a certain good or service that the society offers, that's that. But as far as tithes, there cannot be any tithes until the promised land. And this is something that we have come across this particular issue, but seeing even this vid and some other vids, and seeing the fact that this is now becoming, it's like the consciousness is growing so that this issue can be better understood, it can be better grasped in its proper relationship. This is what we're pointing out, this vid right here. And even if you can't buy a copy of it or get a copy, you can check it out on the, on the YouTubes. Um, it's called The False Teachers, the second edition. You probably already have seen probably are familiar with some of what's in this particular video. But there's a key point right here when we say no tithes, no tithes till the promised land. The brother in the vid that we, that we mentioned, the, the, the black Gentile Christian brother, did you notice what I said? Black Gentile Christian. He's not a black Hebrew. One of the things that Yahweh... Baruch Hu, blessed be he, was particularly upset with our ancestors, and this is a lesson for us to learn from the history, is that they were not able or they did not um, make a distinction between the holy and the profane. Now, as we're studying in the Torah portions, the sabbatical Torah portion, I know that this week's is Naso. And, and not so we haven't gotten into as of yet, and it's in the book of Numbers. It's the second, it's the second reading or part of shot in the book of Numbers. And all is number. One, one Greek, Egyptian, 
mystery school educated Ethos Plato or Pythagoras um, had basically said that all is number. And there's a next vid that speaks about um, um, in plain sight secrets, so forth and so on, in plain sight that deals with a lot of the, the, the mystery and the magic of numbers. And this particular book, Torah portion, numbers is, is, is key. And we talked about how numbers deal with counting, not just one, two, three, but also accountability, as well as priority. You understand? If you're putting things, ordering things, you're going to put things in order. Say, well, this is first, this is second, this is third. This is why for the disciples, the Dek Amezamurit, the... Um, learn how to count and the and the and the and the and the, the counting system that we use. I know one. You know what I mean? The one God. You know, I know two, which is duality or father and son, also covenant, is teaching us both the scriptural relevance in, in, in shorthand. It's almost like a catechism, except we really don't want to um see a catechism is just question and answers. His Majesty said that that's okay, but it's better, you know, to get into the fullness of it, and the questions and answers cannot fully satisfy our our soul, you know, our soul longing for the fullness of the truth. But questions and answers are good as as props, as kind of help, as a way of even testing your knowledge and testing what you know. And this is one of the reasons why the learn how to count and the chart about the, you know, from 1 to 10, using scriptural and biblical references to these key numbers is also important. So as far as discipleship, check that out, and we're, hopefully we'll be able to publish some more of the, of the gospel of his majesty, different books, since only book one has been published so far. But you can go to the website, and there's more information there. But the main thing is that numbers equals accounting or counting, and then you have accountability too, which which links with responsibility as well. So, in a in a sense, it is true that all is numbers. Even I, not earthly father, John bless his soul, had you know had said to I that when I was young, he's like numbers. He said, learn numbers and math. He said math is the only in a sense precise science. You know, like, for example, we can talk about history. I say, well, I agree with this part, and I explain that fact. And you say, yeah, I understand that, but what about this? This is really the most. So on those sort of levels, it's a different sort of um, knowledge or knowing. But with numbers, it's like 1 plus 1 equals 2 in any sentient, coherent culture, you know, whether it is primitive or whether it is supermodern, or even whether it is extraterrestrial. There is something even divine about, about numbers. Now, the book of Numbers is important, too, as we've touched on, because the book of Numbers is speaking about what sort of responsibility do we play. In other words, what's our position? What's our role? What's our, what do we take um, responsibility for? in our Father's house, what are we willing to be accountable, and who is accountable for what? This is the only way a people can become a sovereign people when we start to talk about the issues of sovereignty. But it begins, all of it begins with faith. See, with the, with the true faith, one will build up the courage, and one would also work and do what's necessary to meet it, but it's not an impossibility of what they're seeking to meet. And that is, that is the, the, the perfection the original perfection that we, after thousands of years, have been deceived and lost. We've been robbed out of our birthright. And this is why many of y'all who have recognized that we're not just black folks, we're Ethiopian Hebrews. You know, saying we're Beta Israel. In other words, we are better in that sense than that. But there are other black folks, especially a lot of them in the church, who, who strongly believe, you understand, that they are Gentiles. And it's an interesting argument in this prosperity, this whole issue about the false, um, the false uh, teachers or preachers and pastors and the whole prosperity, the false prosperity um, gospel that's going on out there. And the brother who explained tithing better to his congregation, 
touched on something very important, and he said that we are Gentiles. And I heard this before in the church. Gentiles. Okay, we Gentiles. But as I started to grow and really recognize and study books and study history and get the facts, I said, well, the facts that I'm finding really shows that whoever is non-Israelite or non-Hebrew is a Gentile. Then I start to learn that Ethiopic and Maharic and those people of the Horn of Africa, whether they are Ishmaelites, um, Arabs, or, or Muslim in their religion, or whether they are Christian, you know, Ethiopian, or Nubian, or whether they are Animus, and their language is Afro-Shemitic. I'm like, wait, wait, hold on. That means that they're Hebrews too. And then the light, you know, the light starts to come on, so forth and so on. But these brothers... Um, these um, well, the one who he's my brother, even the black man who's on here who points out about tithes, the preacher who's preaching about tithes and and teaching it correctly. He says to his congregation when he's reading this, he says, it says to Israel, he says, is there? He says, are we Israelites? And uh, you hear that it's like a mainly southern kind of black congregation. You can hear them murmuring and stuff. He said, we're not Israelites, we're Gentiles. So you have to recognize who it's speaking to. Now, that might upset some of y'all. You know, when you hear that, you write, this black man should be telling them that, well, maybe he should be. But, you know, it, like the Bible says in Revelation, he who seeks to be, you know, is, you know it's one has free will. And they, if some of our people recognize or think of themselves as Gentiles, and we recognize the truth that we are Hebrews, why are we getting in useless arguments? What went in Christ for the Gentile or for the Jew, whether the black Gentile or the black Jew. But there's an important point about tithes. Tithes were, were prescribed or were commanded for Beta Israel. Tithes were not commanded for Gentiles. We have to, we have to get to the crux of that. So we got black folks who may be some form of Hebrew, you understand, or who may be some form of non-Hebrew, you understand, either way, if they say, well, I believe in Jesus Christ and for my salvation, so forth and so on, they accept all that according to his word and live their lives correctly, morally, even though we say, well, you're an Israelite and try to show them if they don't receive it, they don't receive it, leave them alone. You understand? We waste too much time on that particular issue. And once again, it comes around to that question or that, that point I made about distinguishing. You understand that we no longer distinguish the holy, that which is set aside from the profane, that which is profane. So same thing with Israel. If we as Beta Israel, the reason why we're in this sort of situation as once lost but now found is because of disobedience. We obeyed everything of the Gentiles, the enemy nations that showed us no love or mercy, but yet the one who blessed us, the one who gave us a land flowing with milk and honey, we would turn our backs to and not our faces to. And he let us go, he let us do what we wanted to do, and we wandered and we ended up in this, in this prophetic and pathetic situation as a people. But on tithe, there should be no tithes received by this society or any of our Hebrew brothers, you know what I'm saying, in any of their communities. I think all Israelites who understand Torah, and this is why I'm bringing it forward to I and I Rastafari brothers and sisters, is that there can't be no tithes until the promised land. No tithe, because if you really study tithes, tithes has to do with the produce of the land. And then that's a further condemnation of what we see going on in these self-professed black Gentile churches. It's not like they're even making a connection, the proper connection that they should be making between Solomon and Sheba or the Ethiopian eunuch or, or our great history as a people. They turn their backs on it. But in Christ, there's, you know, Christ, grace. They receive grace of Christ. But they're falling from that grace because they are putting their hands, you understand, into the wealth of our people and fooling them under false pretenses, 
saying that one must get, give tithes in order to be blessed. And we hope that we've never preached that. And we don't remember ever preaching that, but we hope that we've never, and we have, we humbly apologize that to give tithes, one is blessed because of the amount of tithes that they give, which is a tenth of their income. Another important thing, too, for brothers and sisters that might be watching this, and if you still go to the church or fellowship or associate with folks who go to church, there is biblical scripture that shows that tithes were only, were only given in a sense. There were two harvests. There was a, 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 a former and a latter harvest. There were two main harvests, right? And the harvest, since the tithes was of, of all the increase, it was of the increase of the abundance that came forward from the land. Now, we want to teach on this particular subject now. We still have another teaching on, on um, Zechariah, the Zachar teaching that we want to fulfill on. But we thought that this to, to be so very important for us to, first of all, just come forward and say, listen, tithes for us as Israel, see those Negroes, blacks, and coloreds, they don't acknowledge that they are Israel. They say they are black, they're Gentiles. Some of them will say they're not African, and all this other confusion. Allow them. They could be your own family, bloods, whatever like that. But then if you are truly in Christ, you know that, you know, at a certain point, you have to separate yourself in order to grow in Christ, in order to stay in the love of Yeshua, who they falsely call Jesus, our black Lord and Savior, who they falsely whitewash. And this is what's wrong with these Negroes right here. Now, another important statistic that I thought of, and I just want to share this right here, hopefully get into a little bit more on this. Um, these prosperity, there's some researches on these mega churches, these mega churches, right? And it's interesting, mega is a Greek word. So if you go to the Greek New Testament, it's interesting where you see mega used. All right, just, just a little hint for those who, who like a little um, search seek and find, right? Um, but that these mega churches, in about a year's time, they raise on average, or have been known to raise on average, 400, roughly, I think it was 60 or so billion dollars from the majority from poor black folks who are looking for a, a so-called blessing to pay their bills, their bail, to play to pay Balaam. You see the connection? To pay their bills, their bails. So now they go to these false prophets of Baal, and this is one of the false prophets of Baal. It's very obvious. You understand? This is a couple of other um who are some of these guys right here. These are some of the other false prophets of Baal. And you can see that's 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 the monarchy that they're working for right here. That's their shield. You say it's T B N well, yeah, who, who, who you think they are, what you think they're down with, so forth and so on. And it, and it connects with a whole other um, bloodline and a whole other um, um, kingdom. It doesn't connect with the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ. You understand? And this is the flag of the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ. This is the true banner of salvation. And the reason why they reject it like so much else that they reject it is because niggas are under a curse. They've been cursed. You understand? Who has cursed them? They've cursed themselves because of disobedience. So tithes, whenever you hear tithes spoken of by a Gentile church, just know that that's in violation. That's in violation of, of Jah's word, because it's so very interesting. We've got this little uh, concordance right here. We're still going to go through a couple of these. Hopefully later on we'll get into a little more detail. Just, just pay a little bit of attention to this. So no tithes for I and I. Donations, whether it's a donation, whether it's a gift, whether it's a free will offering. See, a free will offering means that somebody says, well, in my heart, I like the principle of a tenth. I'll still give a tenth. You understand, for this ministry and for the putting out of this truth and for the moving forward of I and I society and the church and the church triumphant in this evil world. So be it. You understand? Of course there's a blessing in that, but it's not as though one is giving something in order to have their bills paid, their bail, bill, bail, billy goat. 
that Billy Goats paid. You, you see, you, you see, in some of the connection right there. You over know, see these things are already in front of us. You understand? Know but we've been so programmed to receive it one way, and we're not really in our proper person, so we're not seeing it as as it is. And, and not also having that faith. Or once you have that faith, that faith has to be grounded and rooted in us. Because some of the things that we learn when our eyes so-called are open up are shocking. You understand? Some of these things can, they say, have the potential to drive a person crazy. But see, a lot of that's outside of the faith. So people are learning more and more stuff, but you, you see the acting delusional because they have no, they have no, um, no, no anchor. You understand? There's no anchor for their souls, you understand, because they're not really unplugged in that sense, and maybe they're not really ready to be unplugged, you know, and that keeps them inert, and, and what's inertia, you understand, we also be a Rastafari movement, the movement of John's people, you understand, so there's a, that means we have to be unplugged, you understand, but some of us grow the dreadlocks, eat vegetarian foods, maybe a couple of verses here, there, and that is not, that's, that's not it. That's, that's basically not, not it at all. You understand? His majesty teaches, it is Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos. It's the Bible. You understand? It's the Bible. Learn the truth for yourself. If you believe in what you're hearing here or there, and you're not really seeking to find out for yourself, you're going to be found out to be a fool. You understand? And, and maybe a very costly mistake, not learning the truth for yourself. This is for all of us. Because when we know the truth for ourselves and we have faith, then we can come together and unite. Then there's nothing in John that's impossible for us. But these little things, these little things that we're dealing with, they become like insurmountable mountains. We can't tell them to move because of one key deficiency. And that is building our house on the rock. And that rock, proverbially speaking, is his word. It's hearing his word and doing it. If it's difficult to do it, that's why you have prayer. You understand? And hopefully brotherhood and fellowship. If it's not there right now, pray on it. You understand? Pray on it. You understand? And trust. And you're not alone anyway. You should recognize that you're not alone. You understand? In the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. How do I'm locked? Now, the practice of paying tithes is very ancient. The practice of paying tithes. You know what a tithe in another sense is? It's like if you ever get in a business contract, right? A business contract, right? And somebody says, um, you know, like a, a manager, so to speak, you know, or an agent. They usually take about a tenth, right? Don't they? Some might take a little more or less. Depends on what's negotiated in different industries. So when it's about tithes, let us get out of our mind on a certain level all this religious mumbo-jumbo around tithes. It's clear that what gains us blessing and prosperity and truly the ability to, um, to live and even to live more abundantly, even in difficult times, is the truth, is the Word of God. You know, and to receive, you see, a lot of people are learning the truth, but they don't love the truth. The Bible even talks about that because they don't have a love of truth. I was like, wow. You would miss that for a moment. You go back home because they don't have a love. So they're hearing the truth, but they don't love the truth. They get upset. They get angry. They get fearful because they're not approaching the truth in the right way. It's almost like greed in a sense. You understand? Another, another evil spirit, evil thought. But the practice of paying tithes is very ancient. For we find, let's get into this, we find in Genesis 14 and 20, that Abraham, that father Abraham, he gave tithes or asrat to Melchizedek or to Melchizedek, king of Salem, at his return from his expedition against Kedor Lomer, Kedor Lomer or Laomer, Kedor Laomer, and the four kings in confederacy with him. Abraham gave him the tithe of all the booty, of all the loot, in other words, that was taken from the enemy. Yaakov, he imitated this piety or this, or this sign of, of faithful good willingness, right, 
Yaakov, he imitated that, right, of his grandfather when he vowed to Adoni, to Adonai or Yahweh, or rather we could say Elohim, Ha Elohim, right? He vowed to the Lord the tithe of all the substance he might acquire in Mesopotamia. Now there's some details to this, but this is Genesis 28 and 22. So the first verse that we should have for tithe, one of the first verses that we should have for tithe is uh, Genesis 14 and 20. Now the next time that we find tithes, besides Genesis, besides in the Abrahamic family, is amongst the Beta Israel, and in particular, we don't even have tithes so, so much as I, as I recall at all in Exodus, but we have it in Leviticus. You remember the golden calf incident? Let's understand something. The golden calf incident, after the golden calf incident, Israel, our ancestors had showed their unfaithfulness, their, their, their quick, fast unfaithfulness. And therefore, they could not be that nation of a divine, holy priesthood or a theocracy. So instead, one tribe that remained faithful, the tribe of Lewi or Levi, Moses's own tribe, his, some say his fraternity, after all they were his brothers or, or his, his kins and kindred of his particular people, you know, the 12 tribes, that was one tribe, they now would receive the tithes, the tenths. But there was a condition, there's two conditionalities on this. This is why we say, first of all, we know we are not Gentiles, and that's part of the lie. You understand, that's a part of the major lie that we as, as Ethiopian Hebrews over here under false names, pseudonyms, false names, so forth and so on, that we're Gentiles. That's part of the lie. You see, and that's why they gave you an English or maybe a French or maybe even Spanish, you know, or, or some other kind of European name to make you have a tie with them, but not as an equal because you call yourself African-American. And they, they already tell you, not really from Europe, you may have some white European blood in your DNA, and we know how that was had. That wasn't out of love or whatnot. You know, was there some love somewhere along the line? Maybe, but come on, let's look at the reality of it. You know what I'm saying? That was, in, that was based on the curses for disobedience. That was in judgment. You know what I'm saying? So now coming out as a free people, these are the first things we look at our status. You understand? Are we, are we defending civil rights or are we defending our human rights? You know what I'm saying? Are we third and fourth class, second class, three-fifths of a man? Only if you're a Negro, black, and colored does that apply. Does that... The, see, if you read the Constitution, not in your proper person, you're going, to, you're going to have to hold on to 13th, 14th Amendment because there's that other clause there about three-fifths of a person. You see what I'm saying? But now, if you strike Negro, Black, and Colored, the artificial persona, artificial, uh, you know, the corporate person, and you come back to your natural state, you see, that's part of the spiritual and even legal being born in that sense again, you see, then all of that is stricken. And if you look at the Constitution again, then you really can understand, one, the Moorish, some of the Moorish legal arguments concerning the role of black people, you understand, in sovereignty. And then those black people that they call, quote, Moorish, some of them were Ethiopian. And we made the connection between Moor, Amhara, Amir, Amir, Emir, 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 Amir, Amhara. We made that particular connection already in the next video. You'll see that's, that's now figuring out these names and the connection.